So I'm at the thrift store. They've got VHS tapes, Happy Meal toys, stinky old typewriters, you know, the usual. But then, out of the corner of my eye, I see a 1986 Apple Macintosh Plus with original keyboard, mouse, and I don't think that's the original power cable, but it's mostly there. So after about four seconds of deliberation, I bought it. And I also bought a VHS tape and a Happy Meal toy. So I got the thing home, plopped it down on my desk, and here's where I made my first mistake. I plugged it in. It actually seemed fine for the first few minutes, but I left it running while I was looking up boot disks online, and then I heard a crackling sound. And then it filled my home office with magic smoke. So I picked up a Torx screwdriver, cracked the case open, and yeah, we popped a capacitor. I don't know how they pack all the smoke into these things, but science is amazing. While the smoke was clearing, I ordered a full set of new capacitors and had my friends Nick and Dan recap the analog board. I also picked up a blue SCSI hard drive emulator. And so far, this thing runs like a dream. I caught up on all the games I'd played as a kid and even tried some new ones. But before long, I got to thinking, can this thing go on the internet? Yeah, and it's actually not that hard. In addition to emulating external hard drives, the Blue SCSI can use the attached Raspberry Pi Pico's Wi-Fi chip to emulate a rare Macintosh Ethernet adapter. Way more cost-effective than eBay prices, and your computer won't even know the difference. I kind of love that since it can connect to any old Wi-Fi hotspot, theoretically, I could just roll up to a coffee shop and surf the web on this thing. But that theoretically is pulling a fair amount of weight, because while connecting to the internet is one thing, actually browsing it turns out to be another. For example, here I'm using MacWeb 2.0, a web browser released by Tradewave in 1996. It doesn't understand CSS or JavaScript, but it does understand good old HTML. And you might think that's enough to get the gist of a web page, but there's another problem. These days, most websites encrypt traffic between the host and the client for, I don't know, security or something. And so far, no one's released a web browser for vintage Macs with HTTPS support. But I found this blog post from 2013 where Jeff Keecher of Keecher.com was, like me, trying to get a Macintosh Plus online. Jeff's friend Tyler whipped up a Flask-based web proxy that sits between the Mac and the internet and strips out all those fancy modern HTML tags like script and style and serves simplified HTML over HTTP without all that pesky security and encryption. A more recent fork by Daniel Markstedt takes things even further by converting text characters that the Mac can't understand and letting you download binary files. But while Mac Proxy does work to get a vintage Mac online, pretty much everyone who's tried it has had the same two things to say about it. It's a little slow, and it's a little ugly. And this is kind of an inherent limitation of Mac Proxy. We're doing the same post-processing on every page the Mac requests. But, hypothetical, what if someone forked the repository and added, I don't know, modular, domain-specific handling, tweaking individual websites for optimal compatibility with vintage machines? Yeah, that'd be cool. Someone should really do that. So, here's my fork of Mac Proxy which I call Mac Proxy Plus. The main addition is support for extensions, which intercept requests for a given domain and route them through some custom handling. Like this one that scrapes weather.gov and strips out all but the essential HTML. But I know you didn't click on this video to watch me check the weather. You want to see this 40-year-old hunk of junk do some cutting edge crap. So here's ChatGPT on a computer from 1986. These are the same large language models you can interact with on OpenAI's website. So it's just as useful as those, but with a more rustic interface. And since the code's so bare bones, it's easy to drop in other models, like my go-to, Anthropic's Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which actually helped write a lot of the code for this video. Thanks, Claude. Do
But if you're tired of AI-generated text that may or may not be true, how about the same thing, but written by humans? Wikipedia.org is one of my favorite websites. I usually drop in to read about one thing, and then I'm like, ooh, yeah, I want to learn about that too. I think MacWeb 2.0 completely predates the concept of tab browsing, which makes for a much more deliberate Wikipedia browsing experience. What is this, school? Can we look at some memes, please? Here's Reddit on a Macintosh Plus. I was actually kind of surprised by how well this works, but I guess it makes sense because at its core, Reddit's mostly just pictures and text. Every time Mac Proxy Plus receives a request for an image, it downloads it server side, converts it to a GIF, resizes it to fit the Mac screen, then uses the Floyd Steinberg dithering algorithm to approximate shades of gray using only pure black and white pixels. Images still take a second or two to load, but as Reddit clients go, this is totally usable. Next up, let's check out Hackaday. Hackaday is kind of a technology, hardware hacking, DIY news site. And I recently found out that they host a retro version of their site, meant for use with vintage computers. I think this is mad cool, but it seems like this page only serves posts from around 2010 or so. And while I do like the idea of reading vintage articles on a vintage computer, Hackaday's tagline is fresh hacks every day. And dare I say it, these hacks are a little stale. So I inspected some elements and whipped up a custom Hackaday extension, which parses the main site, hackaday.com, and spits out some super simplified HTML that actually loads pretty fast on my Macintosh Plus. It still takes a few seconds to load each page, but you can read articles. You can read comments, and you can even search for your favorite hackers. This next one's a little out there, so bear with me. Instead of spending all this time trying to make modern websites work on an old machine, what if we just used old websites? And that's where the Internet Archive's Wayback Machine comes in. Since 1996, they've been taking snapshots of pretty much everything on the internet. And with Mac Proxy Plus's Wayback Machine extension, we can access all of it. You can set the date to any time between January 1st, 1996 and today. And while the extension is enabled, instead of showing you what a given website looks like today, it'll show you what that website looked like on that date. Something about browsing vintage websites on a vintage computer just feels right. And you can even download images and other files that the Internet Archive has backed up like these from NASA's Picture of the Day archives, which started in 1995. Or you can visit Nintendo.com to read about the hot new Virtual Boy games coming out this year. Maybe apply for a job? Catch up on the newest research from Xerox Park? Get the scoop on this season's hottest new computers and accessories? Or even become a certified internet guru? But as much fun as it is to click around in here, the Internet Archive only has about 866 billion pages backed up. What do you do after you've seen them all? I don't do this very often these days, but as a kid, I used to type random URLs into my browser's address bar just to see if they were real websites. WebSim takes this idea one step further by sending whatever you type in the address bar to an AI, which thinks for a second, and then responds with an interactive, imagined version of what that website might look like if it existed. People have used this to make some crazy stuff. I tried using it to make a Sim Earth clone, and it almost worked. But who needs WebSim when we've got the WebSim we have at home? You activate this one by navigating to WebSimulator.ai and clicking Enable. And now, when you enter something like ASCIIartist.net in the address bar, Claude 3.5 Sonnet generates the page live. And it turns out Claude is still a beginner ASCII artist. Though I really enjoyed this sushi piece. Kind of looks like a little person. Along with every request, I'm feeding it the full HTML of the last three pages you visited. And this can lead to some really interesting situations. Like, 
I had it generate a newsroom article from an imagined Napster.com announcing their impending closure due to mounting legal pressure. But then over on the Napster.com forums, I saw that someone had posted about a Napster legal fund. They shared a link to a donation page and I was feeling generous, so I donated a hundred million dollars. And the rest is alternate history. Simulated RPGs work really well too, like this Earthbound themed MMO. And since none of it's been coded beforehand, things are really open-ended. Almost like a hypertext D&D campaign. I even got it to generate this HTML-only version of Tic-Tac-Toe. Which, I think you'll agree, is technically a video game. But I know you saw that YouTube disc in the thumbnail. Can we really watch videos on a computer from 1986? Well, yes, but not from YouTube. Instead, I've created Not YouTube, a legally distinct parody of YouTube, which uses a homebrew app called Mac Flim to encode videos stored on your host machine for playback on vintage Macs. When you click a link on Not YouTube, Mac Proxy Plus looks up the associated video file on your host machine, then uses Mac Flim to encode it as a series of dithered black and white frames. Flim files also contain a 22 kilohertz audio track turning this lowly Macintosh Plus into a multimedia powerhouse. There is one small downside. It's not fast. According to the Blue Scuzzy Wiki, we can only pull down about 60 kilobytes per second. And I don't know if it's something to do with my setup or what, but I'm getting closer to 400 bytes per second, which means this baby can go from zero to Rickroll in a cool, 17 hours. So, yes, it's a little impractical, but clearly, practicality is not one of my interests. It's kind of fun to imagine an alternate reality where this software was around back in the day and used as a way to distribute movies and music videos. AHA's Take On Me is still a masterpiece, even after being shrunken, letterboxed, and deep fried. And Bad Apple looks fantastic in its original full color. Old black and white films, like this Betty Boop cartoon from 1933, are surprisingly watchable. And is this the best way to watch Shrek? No. But it still looks pretty good if you take a few steps back and maybe squint a little bit. And that's Mac Proxy Plus, available now on GitHub. If there are any websites I didn't cover that you'd like to see running on a vintage Macintosh, let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, tell a friend. You won't find me on Twitter or Instagram, but you can follow me on Gobbler and Huntergram. Next time on the show, we'll be hacking up some hijinks with this rare Nintendo GameCube keyboard controller. Stay tuned for more.